All right, all right. What's going on, party people? This your man Griff. Hey, I know it's been a minute since I've been on since last Friday. I don't think I've done any videos this week. This might be my first one. But I wanted to talk to y'all about the word seal. S-E-A-L. Okay. The word seal that a lot of people are having a huge issue with. Um they're having a huge issue with this word right here, okay? Seal. Um, so you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, many of you have the issue, have seen the word on documents, and the problem that we are having right now. Oops, <laughs> wrong thing. The problem we're having right now is many people are just stamping everywhere they see the word seal. And there are people out there teaching that. And they're teaching it incorrectly. That is not something we're supposed to be doing. The only time we're stamping is when there's a notorial acknowledgement statement. And if there's a notorial acknowledgement statement, that's when we put our stamp down. But what people are doing is <laughs> they're just stamping everywhere they see you know the word seal and um oops i'm sorry i'm just trying to pull something up for y'all real quick like um just saw it all right sorry about this i ah, hear this i think this is it yeah so people you know, what we're supposed to be doing is, and let me zoom in on this here, then I'll share this with y'all. All right. So, what we're supposed to be doing is stamping here in this notarial acknowledgement area. And yes, it has the word seal here in this notorious acknowledgement. And in this case, it's talking about our stamp. And we're going to get a little more in detail on this. But this here is kicking a lot of people's butt. Because if they see the word seal on a document, in this case, at the end of the line here, as you see it here, let me zoom in. I didn't realize it was that small. And they see this, there's no Tory, this is the promissory note. There's no notorial acknowledgement at all, but people are stamping there. They're putting their stamp there anyway. So they're stamping here and they're stamping here and you, and there's no notorial acknowledgement statement there. And that is a huge, huge problem. So what I'm going to do is go over the information, this information, and just share with y'all to help you understand the whole concept of the word seal. So that if anybody comes to you trying to teach you, or if you run across another notary talking about, yeah, I just stamp every time I see the word seal, you need to refer them to this video. And in the description, you're going to see all the links to everything that I'm, that I'm going to be showing you. And you need to go look at that so that's what y'all need that's what i'm asking y'all to do um and we're going to start off here with the nna what the nna says okay and da -da -da -da. so what the nna says and I always gotta it says what does it mean when the word seal appears next to the borrower's name, should I stamp it with my notary stamp? The word seal at the end or below the signature line means signature. For example, a mortgage note, that's what I just showed you, or a Fannie Mae deed of trust will have seal at the end of the line for the borrower's signature. A person's signature is considered their seal in this case, it is not referring to the notary to a notary seal, and you should not affix an image of your seal there. 
If the document requires notarization, typically there will be a certificate of acknowledgement following, following, following the borrower's signature. That's what the NNA says. Now, that's partially correct. Because that's my thought process was, and I was before I ever read the NNAs, I was like, when I did some basic research, I was like, okay, seal, you know, that's your signature. It's more to it than that. And that's what I'm going to talk to y'all about tonight. Now, there's a danger in what I'm about to do. And the danger is that people, when people get knowledge, they tend to not take it. The way this knowledge should be taken is, okay, good to know. This is not for you to go around trying to tell the signers or explain stuff to the signers or trying to show how smart you are, okay? This is just for your general knowledge and to help you understand the whole concept and purpose of the word seal, the history behind it, so you can understand, okay, I'm not supposed to stamp there. And I'm going a little more in depth and detail. I talked to the, the members, the people that are members on the channel about this briefly, and I told them I was going to be doing a little more depth and uh, be a little more in depth about it because I want you to understand the history behind this so that you can clearly say, okay, I know I'm not supposed to be stamping there because I got to hit this at different angles because you say, well, okay, I hear what you're saying over here, but what about this over here? And the problem is that notaries right now, <clears throat> are doing everything they can to find justification for doing stuff that they pay somebody to teach them. I paid them and they taught me this and I got to find a way to execute it. I got to find a way to do this. Okay, well, somebody's showing you that what you was with the information you got was wrong and you just need to believe that the end and they might say it's wrong. This person might say, but you still are like, no, I'm gonna go do it anyway because I paid money for it. Or because I like that person, I don't want to seem like I'm, you know, I don't want to be dissing that person. So I'm going to do what they said, even though I clearly see I shouldn't. And we got to get out of that. OK, so I'm trying to hit this from various different angles so you can see that in the end of this day, that there's no reason whatsoever for you to put your stamp there. That's just the bottom line to this. And honestly, I can just end the video right there. Put the links in the description. You go research it for yourself. But I know that a lot of people don't want to take the time out and people just want to be given an answer. People just want to be told what to do. So in this case, I'm going to tell you what to do. And I will start off. I'm going to begin by telling you what to do and then back it up with facts. So I'm going to tell you now what to do. Don't stamp there. Now, we see what the NNA says. The NNA says it means a signature, but that's not necessarily the case because there's a little deeper meaning to this. So I'm going to be reading briefly, skimming through some documents um, so you can understand what it actually means, okay? And this first one I'm going to go through, and again, the link's in the description, is for Georgia. It's about Georgia. Now, I'm not going state by state. I'm just using Georgia because this is one of the ones, it was like the first one that I came across. All right, so this says signing under seal. Even many lawyers don't know what this means, okay? So, da -da -da. Doom, doom. all right, yeah, that should be big enough. So it says, we all frequently sign documents on a signature line that includes seal or LS. Now, I have not personally seen LS at the end of the line. What does this mean? Here is the answer under Georgia law. Other states' laws may differ. Under Georgia law, such and such and such, a document signed under seal extends the statute of limitations to 20 years. That is, it gives a party 20 years, essentially beginning the date of the signature to assert claims against you to the transaction or contract covered by your signature. And on the flip side, it gives you 20 years, gives, gives, it gives you 20, 20 years for you to assert claims against the other party if that party is also under seal. By contract, contrast, contracts under Georgia law, not under seal, are generally subject to a six-year statute of limitations. Thus, the, the longer 20-year extension 
that the seal provides can be good or bad, depending on whether the, it whether you benefit or are burdened by the extended period. Now, I'm going I'm to explain that. And you're going to see this sort of repeated again through the other ones. What that is saying is that if there's a legal issue that you feel that you've been done wrong or that person feels that you they've been done wrong by you, you have a statute of limit your your normal statute of limitations in Georgia. If the word seal is not on the signature line, it's twenty years. I mean, it's um six years, six years. If the word seal is there when you sign it, then it's extended twenty years. That that's what it means. So that's why I'm saying it's not just so. Oh, okay, this here is my signature. It's more than that. It, it can mean more than that, depending on the circumstance and the situation and the state law. So that means <clears throat> if the contract is not signed under the, with the word seal, all it has to have is the word seal in parentheses. That's it. That's all it has to have. Not an actual seal or stamp or an emblem or a crest, just the word seal. That means you are bound to, to this to have 20 year extension on the statute of limitations. Basically it's extended to 20 years. If you don't have the word seal, when you sign, whatever the issue may come up, you got six years to get it fixed to basically pursue legal action against that person. That's what that means. Okay. So let me go back here. So it goes on to says, um, so technically, the effect of signing under seal is effective only if two requirements are met. The word seal has to be in the body of the document, typically at the end, just before the signature block, such as sign under hand and seal this blank day. And separately at the end of the signature line itself must include seal. Give you an example. Let me pull this up for you real quick. That's what this means here. Witness the hand and seal of the undersigned. And as I taught y'all, the undersigned means what? The person signing the document. So whoever the, the whoever signing the document is the undersigned. So witness the hands and seals of the undersigned seal. So that means this document is under seal. Bottom line, okay? And then it goes on to say, yes, the notion of seal is not merely cosmetic. It can have real consequences. Therefore, one needs to think for a moment about whether the sign under the document, the signing document under seal primarily as the extension of the statute of limitations for 20 years. Now, this is where it gets dangerous explaining this to you. Because you are not going to be able to have a better understanding of the word seal and the legal um, implications of it. It does not mean you need to be saying this stuff to the signer or trying to break it down or trying to give a summary. OK, I'm sharing this information to you, one, because it's publicly accessible if you sit down and do the research like I did. And two, because I just want you to be able to know that when you see that word, don't start spazzing out and start stamping all over the place. And everything and you get your stamp and you just slapping the stamp all over. And that's what some people are doing. And this and if you're doing that and then all of a sudden you notice that you're not getting phone calls anymore, that may be the reason why. And if that's the case, you may want to reach out to them and say, hey, did y'all stop using me? Don't even use the word blacklist. Did y'all stop using me because I was putting my notary stamp every time I had everywhere where the word seal was at? Yeah, we were. Well, you know what? I've been educated and I understand better now. I was I was instructed wrong at that time. I've been informed correctly and you will never have to worry about me doing that again. So please, can you give me another shot? You may have to do that. If that was me, I would, because once I understand that I made a mistake and I understand how and I understand that, OK, here's what I need to do to correct it. Then I need to reach out to the people who I may have affected in a negative manner and talk to them and say, hey, can you give me another shot? I've been re-educated, reprogrammed, 
properly informed of what I need to do. And I believe that's what you should do. Okay. So let's see here. So that's that for that one. All right. So let me see here. Double check what I want to pull out of this here. See if there's anything. Because some of these documents are just a little on the boring side. So um, let me see. I think this one. All right. And this one, this document, this is one that y'all um can just read. This this next this one, um, JD Supra. That was their verbiage was just a little, maybe a little too legalese and everything. All right. So this one here. All right. So this one is from the Harrison, if I'm not mistaken, Harrison Law Group. Um, let me show y'all this one. So this is from the okay harrison there harrison law group and this goes over what does and they're out of maryland i believe what does seal next to your name mean okay and it's just showing you know the word seal so it says here's such a small detail that most likely no one asks why it says seal next to the signature however addition of that single word can significantly affect a contract a decontract a bit of history the 19th century in the 19th century companies signing a contract would press their seal into wax on the contract document the purpose was to prove the handwritten signature wasn't forged if later there was a dispute the court only had to compare the seal in the wax to the company's seal to see if they match the practice of using a wax seal was so formal that contracts signed in that manner were considered more solemn than the average unsealed contract. So what it is saying, they held use having that wax seal, that seal on the document in such high regard that if the if the document, the documents were considered more solemn, more together, more valid than documents that weren't okay and therefore could be enforced for longer periods of time over the years at least in maryland the purpose of placing a company seal on contracts changed from forgery protection to proof that the person signing the contract had authority to bind the company so that's what that means so jumping forward to modern day the remnants of contracts under seal still linger in maryland the general statute of limitations for a i don't know who that is um somebody's hold on y'all y'all know how it, how it goes with me hey griffin notary hey good hey let me call you back i'm doing a video and i'm gonna be done in a little bit and i'll call you right back all right, ma'am, I'll take care of um, your questions, whatever you have, okay? All right, cool. Sorry about that, y'all. I was waiting on that call, and um, I didn't think she was going to call tonight. I thought she was going to call tomorrow, but I'll call her once I finish with y'all. All right, so it goes on to say, jumping forward to modern day at Maryland, the limits, the, the general statute of limitation is three years. This means that from the time a person knows or should know that the contract had been breached, he has or she, he or she has three years to sue. But the statute of limitations extends to a vast 12 years if the contract is under seal. So what that basically means, and this is just for your general knowledge, people. Also, if you're doing a contract yourself in Maryland. If you do a contract, you got three years, if it's not under seal, to sue the person if you figured out that they jacked you over. But if this contract is signed under seal, and this is comp corporate stuff, that's probably why it may be best to have that LLC. Everybody talks smack about it. 
okay that's a whole nother topic but that's something that's popping in my head because this here is talking about when companies do contracts okay when companies issue contracts so you have that which means this is probably something that can be on anything on any contract now you get your um your legal ramifications that of being able to sue them extended to 12 years so it goes on to say um so does placing seal next to the signature on the contract actually make the contract enforceable for a longer period of time the answer depends on which state laws govern your co govern the contract in v maryland and virginia adding a single word adding that single word does not itself extends the enforceable period if seal appears next to signatures the court will look to whether the parties knowingly intended for the contract to be subject to a longer limitations period and this here is talking about rouse teacher properties versus maryland and the school board and all of that so what that means is if both parties are aware that by having the word seal on the contract extends the statute of limitations then it's enforceable if if you did it without the knowledge of that then there's a case that at least in virginia and maryland okay now nah, it's not enforceable because you didn't know that that was the case that's what i take from this then it says the trap is that modern contracts frequently have choice of law provisions many contracts choose delaware as the governing contract unlike virginia and maryland and virginia under delaware law merely placing the word seal next to the signature block may convert the contract into a contract under seal and extend limitations period from three years to 20 years and then it gives a court case here that you can look up a contract signed under a contract signed and performed in maryland but with a delaware choice law could become enforceable for 20 years by the addition of that one word okay so right now that should help you understand even the more okay i'm telling y'all i'm telling you you should really you i mean i really could just stop right now and be like okay end of the video class is dismissed but i'm gonna get i'm gonna keep going just just to make sure we are clear clear all that is telling me is that i don't need a stamp and you need to give this video to your notary trainer your notary guru your mentor or whoever and say hey did you know this because if you knew this and you're telling me to stamp any daggone way what the heck is wrong with you give me my money back yeah, I'm at this point now with this stuff, this foolishness that people are doing out here. If they ain't training you right, you need to get your money back, okay? You really do, because if they're telling you stuff to do, that is clearly getting you blacklisted, clearly getting you less notifications. You need, you probably need to um, have a conversation with them and everything. So, um, now and then down here at the end it says boy that seems so small and then here at the end it says the next time you sign a contract look for seal in the signature block you may want to strike through before signing now i'm i'm advising you okay i'm i'm seriously advising you do not go and tell a signer to do that and it is on record here on YouTube that I am not saying that you should go tell a signer to do that. Do not do that. Do not go back and what Griff said, don't do that. I'm telling you, I'm not saying to do that. I'm just sharing with you information that is out there publicly. This is not for you to go and try to be a lawyer or a junior lawyer and tell somebody something like that okay do not do that please don't don't do that whatsoever um all right so this one here is just a small 
And it says, what does this, this here is legal direction, Donna Ray Berkelhammer. This is from her law firm. And it says, what does seal next to your name mean? And I'm showing you this so that you can get a vibe from, see, the word seal to everybody else, it means something else. They're not talking about just your signature. They're talking about the legal implications of it. So it says many people are confused by the word seal at the end of a signature line on a contract. Some, some think it means the document must be notarized. That's what a lot of y'all think that it means it must be, I'm going to zoom in, you know, notarized others panic because they can't find their corporate seal. <laughs> it look, it can look like this. Okay. Historically, the author of important documents would press his or her seal into wax on the document or to close the document to prove their, their authenticity. Authenticity. It was fairly easy to tell that the document had been opened or read because the seal was broken. However, to see the words seal, I imagine King sealing an important document to be delivered to his ministers in a foreign country. Seals were required on contracts signed by corporations in the 19th century for similar authenticity reasons. Currently, North Carolina law does not require contracts to be sealed to be valid. A contract signed under seal with the word seal or seal after the signature line has a 10 year statute of limitations rather than three under a regular contract. That means the parties can sue for breach of contract for up to 10 years. In North Carolina, a contract signed under seal is presumed to have underlying consider to have underlying consideration. And the party trying to invalidate the contract has the burden of rebuting that presumption. So she's in North Carolina. So this is them educating people in North Carolina what the law means. OK, so as you see, you had one that was saying it was a six year basic um, um, statute of limitations that got extended to 12. Another said three to 20. And now this one is saying um, three to 10. So it all depends on the state. So that's why I'm look, if you are a notary trainer, if you are a notary trainer just let the people know they don't stamp there stop lying to people and telling them that they can stamp there and do all this that and the other that is not what they're supposed to be doing okay you should you have enough proof now that this is not what you're supposed to be doing so i got two more to show you i got two more i got two more um So right here on this website, which site is this? Yeah, find an answer. You know, like I said, you go do some research out there. You'd be amazed at what you can find. Okay, so down here, it says right here, is a seal the same as a signature? Seal after the signature is not just another word for signature. It is a remnant from the days when seals were actually used to by impress and impressed in wax, a document under seal in some jurisdictions has legal ramifications. It may extend the statute of limitations for legal actions taken under the document. That is the purpose of it. It goes on to says here, what is the purpose of a seal? A seal is a device making an impression in wax, clay, paper, or some medium, including an embossment on paper, and is also the impression thus made. However, engraved gems such as carve, uh, yeah, never mind, don't worry about it. They're just talking about what can be used as a seal. Um, it goes into legal contract. What is the legal effect? Contracts under seal is binding without consideration because either the formality of the sealing um, displaces the need for consideration, so forth and so on. And you can read the rest of this here yourself. Um, and then this last one, um, now this is the one, this is the real important one here. All right. 
All right, this is a real important one. So again, let's, I just, you know, this is signed, sealed and delivered. What does it mean? Y'all can read all of this first part here. Um, the concept of seal today is talking. One of the things here also, it says the concept of seal today is more prevalent along Eastern seaboard where the ties to the English common law through the 13 colonies are strongest. As one progresses westward in the U.S., the concept fades to oblivion. So you may not see this here as people in the West, Arizona, Texas, um, Nevada, Seattle, Washington, California. OK, so it goes on to says here under common law, documents that were signed under seal were considered more reliable and therefore given greater difference and protection under the law primarily in the form of longer statute of limitations, much longer. In some states, the statute of limitations for contracts signed under seal is 20 years. Some states that have not, uh, some states that have not adopted the concept of seal nevertheless recognize the solemnity of contracts signed under seal in other jurisdictions. So basically, even though a state may not say uh, we don't have that as our law here, but we recognize it if that's in another jurisdiction, you know, another state. In most jurisdictions where the concept of seal is adopted or recognized, there is no distinction in the effect of a corporate seal versus an individual seal, nor is there a distinction between the effect of official seal and simply writing the word seal. In fact, the lawyer told me. A tale of another attorney um, who kept a silver draw on his thing. Uh, that's just a little story and wrote the words. I don't worry about that. All right. Then it goes down here. It says in most jurisdictions, two components are required to create a document un signed under seal. A seal recital above the signatures. A seal recital above the signatures. is this a seal a seal recital above the signatures is required that's that and the word seal affix in some manner after each signature that's that okay so whoever signs this document is signing it under seal and the statute of limitations are now extended. That's what that means. And this here just basically says sign, seal, and deliver as an example of the seal recital. So are in witness of I hear unto put my hand in seal and the less archaic meaning, um, you know what archaic mean. This document is signed under seal a document, because you can use either one of these phrases, this phrase, this document is signed under seal, or this one. And it says, a document signed with the seal recital, but without the word seal, after the signature is not sealed. Similarly, a document that is missing the seal recital, but has the word seal after the signature is still not sealed. That's what that means. So you got to have both, okay? You got to have both. You have to have both on there. If you do not, it is not valid. Here's an example of a signature block for a contract that is not under seal. So it doesn't have it. And this one here, because it has this up here, and then you have that, whoever signed that, boom, it's under seal. So that is it now if you go out here and do this mess that's on you okay your uncle john told you uncle grifton told you hey don't do that but if you go out there and do it you have nobody but to blame me but you no one to blame but yourself okay no one to blame but yourself that is a very very easy thing to rectify now it has been rectified and you should not be um, stamping where the word seal is on a signature line ever, 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 ever again. 
okay do not do that anymore okay yes i'm repeating myself because i'm trying to drive it home because notaries are constantly finding trying to find reasons to just do it anyway i just gotta do it you know i just gotta do this thing why why do you need to do it why is it so important for you to do something that you're not supposed to be doing that's the question you need to ask yourself. And if somebody has told you to do that, and I've been told by people that they were told to do this. And I know I've said it, the NNA has said it, and other people said, don't do that. And people are still doing it. And they're doing it proudly and then wondering. And every single time I hear somebody talk to me about it, they eventually tell me, yeah, that person stopped getting signings. That's more than likely the reason why. So if you're not getting signings anymore and you were a culp culp culprit of this, then you probably need to go back and revisit and let the people know, I'm sorry, it'll never happen again. Give me another shot, please. And yes, put the word please in there. All right. That's it for now, party people. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. So I'm going to give this lady a call back, answer her questions, help her out. And hopefully y'all have been helped out by this. Like, share, hit the thumbs up. Um, let your let your other people know about this video. Let your trainer know, your mentor know, or whoever. And if anybody got any questions, and if anybody wants to refute anything that I have said, or you got some other information that can validate and prove why we need, or well, not we, but you, why you need to stamp after the word seal on a signature line. If you can prove to me why you supposed to do that le legally, legitimately, I give you two hundred dollars. I'm just being honest. I'll, I'll drop two bills on you if you can show me proof and come on, come on, do a live with me. I'm talking about do a live with me and prove to me and the rest of the notary world that you're supposed to be stamping your notary stamp after the word on the seal, si signature line where the word seal is. You got to do that publicly with me. You get two bills. It's that simple. All right.